I need a 64-bit random binary number, and I'm going to get it one bit at a time by flipping this coin. We may be here a while. The second program I ever wrote lit pixels on a dark background randomly used a random number generator. By the way, the first program I ever wrote wasn't Hello World. It actually drew a house. Anyway, the idea was that if I generated random points, eventually the screen would start to look like it filled up, like this cluster of stars started to glow. Now, my mother called me for dinner, got it running. Whenever I came back from dinner, it looked like the program had locked up. To make sure, what I did was added a third random component. I changed the color of those points as they were appearing. So when I ran it again, I found out it hadn't locked up. What had happened was the random numbers had gone into a loop. That's the risk you take whenever it comes to pseudo-random number generators. But there are solutions. So that's what happens whenever you use a deterministic machine in order to try to generate a non-deterministic sequence of bits. So let's go back to this long sequence of coin flips. If I wanted a random number, just say eight bits, and I've got these 255 ones and zeros generated seemingly randomly from a coin flip, right? And I, what I could do is just have this list Say, take a look at maybe what time it is. It, the second hand is at 21 seconds, so I go down to the 21st position, grab the next eight bits, 11001000, there you go. There's a random number. And in fact, what I could do is, since this is a pretty randomly distributed sequence of ones and zeros, then my next number could go to the next pattern of eight bits, and then the next pattern of eight bits, and then the next pattern of eight bits, and so forth, until I got around to the beginning, looped, and then my pattern would repeat again. Now, what if we could take this list and make it a billion, 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 billion times long. Something that was so long that effectively it would take forever to get through the list and loop back around to the top. We could pick a seed, start out at that position in the list, and then just pick off our numbers as we needed them. And then if it was long enough, you'd never see the end of it. The problem is, is where do you store a list that's that long? There's not enough room in memory. Maybe we can't store it. Maybe instead what we should do is create one of these linear feedback shift registers. If you recall, the linear feedback shift register, we had these little memory cells, these D, these D flip-flops that looped around so that you had this linear function here made of exclusive OR gates. And what happened was the bits got shifted with every clock pulse. They got shifted one position to the right. And then the taps, we took these taps, these measurements or these values at the intermediate positions in this shift register, did an exclusive OR operation on them to combine them and brought them back around. If we properly designed that linear function, then based on the number of bits here, for example, if there were n bits, then if a, a properly designed linear function would take 2 to the n minus 1 to get all the way back around. In other words, be it, before you had the same value in those registers, you would have to hit that clock pulse 2 to the n minus 1 times. Now, our list, if we simply watch this last bit here, we can generate our list from it. So the combination of the number of bits in our shift register and a properly designed linear function will effectively give us that list that we were talking about, the list that goes on billion, 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 billion times, right? We start with a seed, which is our initial value, inside those shift, the bits of the shift register, and we watch this last bit, and it will show us that list. So why would we prefer generating these pseudo-random numbers? They are not true random numbers because the list is fixed, but they simulate a good distribution of the random numbers. Why would we prefer this over something like a true random number generator? A true random number generator using something like atmospheric properties or radioactive decay in order to generate a random number. Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, we've got speed. That piece of hardware 
is is going to be v as quick as you can get. You can't get any quicker than just simply generating those numbers directly from a piece of hardware. Low power. We don't have a lot of hardware here. You know, we're talking about just a few of these shift register bits. So there's not a lot of hardware that's being driven. So we've got low power. Um, also, low hardware requirement. I mean, we talked about how, what are we going to do if we want to store a billion, billion, billion different uh, patterns of ones and zeros. We gotta, that's, that would take up a huge amount of memory, so it doesn't take a whole lot of hardware in order to do this. We also have this idea of portability. So a random number generator that's based on something like radioactive decay, if we were to transfer that to another machine that did not have that mechanism, we'd have to come up with a new way. Well, maybe it's using some sort of an atmospheric physical measurement. Well, the sensors and everything that are required would have to be moved to every computer that implemented this, as opposed to just that simple piece of hardware which can be duplicated easily across other machines. Also, whenever you're talking about the using atmospheric or other types of ways to, re to create a true random number, the, the conversion process in order to create a 128-bit random number, not going to be as fast as it will be with the linear feedback shift register. Maybe I want to generate a random sequence, but I want to be able to duplicate that random sequence. And if we use a linear, a linear feedback shift register with the same seed, you're going to get the same sequence. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you're testing for bugs and a particular sequence you know generated a bug in software. Well, you'd want to repeat it so that we can make sure that we can solve that bug. What if instead we're creating a game of solitaire? You're going to be able to store every possible hand of solitaire so that if somebody says, I want to play that game again, you're going to be able to store all those hands? No, you're not. Instead, what you do is you just store the seeds to show where in the list you started in order to create the exact same hand again. So let's do a walkthrough of what this pseudo random number generator might look like. Let's start out with a four bit pseudo random number generator using a linear feedback shift register. So we've got our shift register made from four D flip-flops. Remember, they're all going to be driven off the same clock. I'm not going to draw the clock in this one. All I'm going to do is show that we've got the output of one going into the input of the next one. And then the output of the last one is going to be included. You always include the last one as part of our linear linear function here. If you don't have the least significant bit going into our linear function, you don't need that bit. The only bit that's required, or the, the, the last bit that is required is the last one that's going to be driving this linear function here. And that linear function is going to be made of exclusive OR operations to drive the input for our shift register. Now, it turns out that there are a couple of ways, and there's a lot of science behind this, a lot of mathematics, excuse me, behind this, that shows which taps we're going to use. We already know that we're going to definitely use the last bit, the least significant bit as a tap, but we're also going to pick one of these other taps. And it turns out for a four-bit linear feedback register, we'll use you know, one of the possible ways is to use the first bit and the last bit. So basically this input here, and if I label these guys, I don't know, how about uh, D3, D2, D1, D0, then this position right here is D3 exclusive ORD with D0. So if this bit and this bit are the same, we're going to input a 0 here. If this bit and this bit are different, we're going to input a 1 there. All right. Now, remember that this is going to give us the sequence that is 2 to the 4th minus 1, which is equal to 15. What is the minus 1? Remember, the minus 1 is the all zeros case. We can't fill our shift register with all zeros, or all zeros going into an exclusive OR function is going to give us a zero, and it'll get stuck at all zeros. That will give us a loop of size 1, a period with a, a loop with a period of 1. All right, so let's start out with 1001. That's the value. Those, those are going to be the four values in here. And remember, this last bit right here, that is going to be the stream that we're looking at. So we've got the same, so D3 and D0 are the same, and we shift everything one position to the right. Now we've got same, so a 0 gets shifted in and the rest of the bits get shifted to the right one position. Same, another 0, everything gets shifted to the right one position. Different, we got a 1, 
and everything gets shifted right. Different one, different one, different one, same zero, different one, and everything else gets shifted. And we're going to come up here because I'm running out of board space. We've got same zero. All right, so that shifted these three bits one position right and inputs a zero. And we've got different one. And we've got different one. Same zero. Same zero. Different one. And we have looped back to our 1001. So this, nothing gets duplicated. These are different distinct values all the way through the 15 possible values for this shift register. And so there you go. What we've done is created a sequence of 15 bits that allow us to use just this simple piece of hardware. All right. So instead of having to store all of those values or the 15 bits, all we have is the four bits and the simple exclusive or function. 15 bits, not very long. Won't take very long to get through all those bits before we have to loop around, right? So what if we went a little bit longer? What if we used an eight bit uh, pseudo random number generator using a, a linear feedback shift register? What would that look like? Well, we have the eight bits, right? Let's see, I'll make one more. And it is just a shift register shifting in, coming around. And remember, the least significant bit is always included as part of our linear function. All right, what are our taps? Well, like I said, mathematically, we have generated what the taps need to be all the way up, I mean, well past 128 bit. Now, 128 bit shift register, we'll talk about that one in a moment. But the taps for this 8 bit one, we've got one in the least significant bit. And then what are these? We'll go just as D7, D6, D5, D4, D3, D2, D1, D0. So D0, exclusive word with D1. Exclusive ord with D3, exclusive ord with D4. There you go. That would be a successful linear function in order to create a sequence. And it turns out that list of 20, uh, that list of 255 bits that I showed you earlier on the board, that one was actually generated using an 8-bit linear feedback shift register using those taps. Turns out that you can also use the taps the D7, D6, and D1 and D0. That one will also create a a sequence of ones and zeros with a period of 255. But let's talk briefly about why this should work. If we have, let's say, let's just say two to the eight minus one, that'll give us a period of 255. But what if we went all the way up to 16? That'll give us a period of 65,535. Those are all pretty significant. But the problem is, is that whenever it comes to doing things like Oh, I don't know, security and so forth, that's probably not big enough. And please understand that don't let your security system rely on random numbers that are generated using just an LFSR because, you know, some, some algorithms can be used in order to possibly work your way back if you know what the linear function and the number of bits are that are being used. But that said, 2 to the 128, if we have a 128-bit linear function, 128 bits. That seems like a lot, but 128 bits, that's very little hardware, relatively speaking. What that's going to give you is a period of 3.4 times 10 to the 38th. The number's pretty big. In fact, it's so big that if you wanted to generate a new 128-bit random number every second, it would take you 84,000 million, 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 million years before you were done with the list. That should be big enough for most applications. This is just one type of pseudo random number generator and I show it here because it is hardware based and after all that's what this course is all about.